Oregon, four teams have made it to this round of the Little League Softball World Series. Who's going to play for that title tomorrow night here at Alpen Rose? You take a look at our bracket, the first semifinal tonight. It's Oregon, the local kids taking on the team out of North Carolina, looking for that spot in the championship game. Welcome to Portland, Courtney Lyle alongside two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith and two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough. And as Michelle has let us know several times today, it is National Left-Handers Day, and we have two <laughs> lefties in the circle for this game. <laughs> it's outstanding. I, you know, I couldn't be happier, of course, being on National Lefty Day. Oh, this is a dream come true, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Christmas for oh, Michelle. <laughs> and it's Christmas every day for North Carolina because they have the lefty Campbell Shane pitching for them here at the World Series. Against Iowa, she had 12 strikeouts, only gave up two hits in this entire World Series. In Portland, she's not given up in her run. Well, Oregon, don't forget them because they have a lefty pitcher, too, in Bridget Bowling, who was outstanding in their win. Yeah, Bridget is built for pitching, as her mom says, who is one of the coaches of the team. She has the ability to have that lefty slide, a little bit of a curve coming from that ability to bend the ball back into the zone. That outdoor, outside curve ball has a little bit of a move, a little bit of a drop. She had 10 strikeouts in yesterday's game, 40 for the tournament. She's just been outstanding. Oh, and by the way, she also scored the winning run of the game. So look for Bridget Bowling to do big things in the circle and at the plate tonight for Oregon. Biggest game that these little leaguers have played in. Semi-final time at Alpen Rose. Semifinal time at Alpen Rose. The first matchup of the day, North Carolina against the young ladies from Portland, Oregon. And it's like a home game for Oregon District 4. Chris Button? It is. You know, these this Oregon team doesn't feel like they've earned the same kind of respect as the other teams because they didn't have to go through the same journey. They basically only had to win their district, they didn't then have to go win state and regionals. So they said, we're going to earn that respect on the field. They had a team meeting and tried to figure out how do we do that? And a couple things. They wanted to be loud and they wanted to be focused. And they say that's what attributed to their win yesterday. And they are expecting a ton of fans here today. I am standing inside the Oregon fan base. And if you wanted to see what you should already got here because it is now standing room only for the fans of the Portland District 4. Oregon's going to have a tough test. They're taking on North Carolina and let's meet the kids on this Southeast team. Riley Hagis and Cassidy Seckler has more eyebrows than my dad had hitched for the Mets. I'm Lexi Ritchie and I'm shorter than your five-year-old daughter. Kennedy Fisher, catch me if you can. Hey, I'm Alvin Harrell and I host people down from right field. Hi, my name is Emma Ray Klein and my pump fake is faker than you. Lauren Vanderpool and I make my brother look slow. And a shout out to my family and my Cobra girls at home. Hi, I'm Kaden Slade and I'm known for my dimples. Hi, my name is Andy Evans, and I never play the same position for more than one inning. Shout out to Ella Wilkinson, and hi, Mom. Ashley Yang, and if you haven't heard, Ellen's my sister. Kinley Dextrays, and I'll be your clutch. Carmen Freeze, back with the shades. Hi, my name's Arabelle Schoenberger, and my dog's cuter than your dog. Larson. <laughs> my name is Campbell Shannon, and I get my good looks from my dad. Steve Yang, manager, Rowan Little League, Salisbury, North Carolina, representing Team Southeast. Give a shout out to my office girls back home. I'm Chris Evans, coach for Rowan Little League. I'd like to say hi to my wife and I wish she could be here. Josh Shane, coach. A big shout out to Grandma Bates and all our family and supporters back in Mooresville and Rowan County. North Carolina will be facing Bridget Bowling in the circle. 40 strikeouts this week here at the Little League Softball World Series. 
Bowling just has that typical lefty slide through the zone. Her mom says she's built for pitching. She just has that X factor, that moxie out there, and she showed it in that quarterfinal game. She's had a very good Little League World Series. So look for her to work her fastball. She located a lot in that quarterfinals. Ten strikeouts in that game, 40 for the tournament, Courtney, as you said. It's going to be important for her to get ahead of hitters early here in this semifinal game. This is not the first time that North Carolina and Oregon are playing each other. They met in pool play, of course, and Oregon fell to North Carolina 7-1 to one in that game on Saturday. So they'll be looking to make some adjustments. North Carolina had 11 hits. The bats were really working. Leading off, Lauren Vanderpool, who started off with a bang in the quarterfinals, an inside-the-park home run to start their game yesterday against Iowa. Yeah, she's known as a spark plug for this offense for North Carolina. A lot of fun to watch play. And as soon as that ball got down the right field wall headed towards the fence, she was like headed for first and then second, thinking she was going to score the, the whole way. North Carolina is in Salisbury, North Carolina, and it's between Greensboro and Charlotte, about an hour from Charlotte. These teams went to regionals in Warner Robins, and that's where they were able to win that regional and make it to Portland. Vanderpool rolls it to second, and Allen Gates makes the toss in time. She's got the sun coming in her face, yeah. too. Right side of the field could be tough. That sun starts the set this evening. Yeah, happy to see that the entire Oregon infield actually has their sunglasses on. Always a good sign when you put those on proactively instead of after you drop a ball or lose yeah. it in the sun. Yeah, that's a good thing. And the sun is out in full force. It's a little bit warmer, I feel like, than it was yesterday. It the, is. Yeah. The car said it was 91 on the way over yeah. here. It's toasty. If that is the official temperature reading. <laughs> it's official, I think. But it's still beautiful weather. It's been pretty nice all week here in Portland for this event. Started up on Wednesday with pool play. And then the bracket started yesterday. We've been impressed with pitchers who can hit. Campbell Shane is one of those. Kaya Suyama, out number two. Let me see this Oregon defense just stepping up already. In the tournament, they've had 10 errors here in Portland, but getting tested early, those yeah. are some hard hit ground balls, one to Gates and then one to Suyama, just swallowing them up, swallowing them up and making the outs. Two outs now for Avril Harrell, a 333 hitter this week. Yesterday in the quarterfinals, she went one for two against Iowa. And being the home field for Oregon, early in the tournament, I mean, they admittedly said, hey, we have nerves. Even though we played on this field, we've been on the field prior, we grew up watching and wanting to get to this tournament. For their first couple games, the butterflies were in the stomach, but they have definitely settled in. And now they get the benefit of having Pat stands with a That's home right. crowd behind them which can be a good and a bad thing because sometimes as a player you love those home games because the crowds are so big but it can also cause some more nerves yep. because now grandma cousins grandpa and aunt and uncle are in the stands versus just your mom and your dad if it was an away game and they're all there to watch you and your team too but you want to perform for them but definitely an amazing crowd here for semifinal number one it's good to see I've even talked to some fans who just live in this area. They don't have a child playing, but they bring their kids yeah. to this event to watch these young athletes play. It opens up the possibilities. And it's growing every year too, right, Michelle? I mean, yes. You've been doing it for 20 years. Look at the growth that you've seen for this tournament. It's unbelievable. Yeah, the 
young ladies that watch it throughout the country and, and make the fine goals to say, that's my goal next year. I want to make it to Alpen Rose. The row gets jammed, it'll drop foul. Even the international teams have started to have that dream. We talked to one of the players who, when she was five years old, who plays for Italy, she told her dad she wants to come to Portland and play. And we're going to see her later in the second semifinal game. Steve Yang is the manager of this North Carolina team wearing Southeast across their chest. They've been here several times, and that's a big get right there, a walk with two outs. You know, that patience and discipline at the plate is something that the North Carolina players talked to us about earlier today when we got a chance to talk to them about, hey, what did you like about your quarterfinal game going up against Iowa? And the number one thing offensively that they wanted to do was have discipline, have patience at the plate, and they drew five walks in that Iowa game, and they really liked that and wanted to build off of it. Here comes Riley Hagis with a runner on and two outs. Well, that's one of the MOs of usually Steve Yang's teams. As a manager, he's, he has the ability to really, uh, I wouldn't say that he's a strict coach, he's a disciplined coach. He, he tells his kids what he wants from them. He wants them to be disciplined at the plate. He wants them to be disciplined in the circle defensively. And that's why they end up making it here repeatedly to the Little League World Series. And they really felt like they had their best at bats of the entire season in yesterday's game. So going into this game for a semifinal, you're, you're feeling good at the plate collectively as a team. Runner going. And Harrell gets down. Oregon has allowed 11 stolen bases in this tournament. So. Harrell gets a, gets a good jump and goes in hard. Love the running form yeah. that we've seen here at the World Series. Yeah. Head down, pumping their arms, just really good form. Just a lot of athletes here at the World Series. Harrell in scoring position for Hagus. Full count. North Carolina scored four runs yesterday in their quarterfinals win over Iowa. We saw four shutouts yesterday, and it was, you know, every case, the team that struck first obviously got the win. Saw some good pitching, some really good defense, some timely hitting. A typical recipe to uh, advance. Quick shoe check. All the laces are tied now, and Hagas can step back in. Full count. Two walks in a row for Bridget Bowling. She didn't walk anyone yesterday. And that's something that the victor, the victorious pitchers from yesterday's game did such a good job at. In fact, the four winning pitchers in yesterday's game, there were only two walks that they had in those four games. So yesterday's winning pitchers just had so much command, so much confidence in the circle, and the rest of the team fed off of that. And my apologies, she had two walks yesterday in that win, 10 strikeouts. Kenley Dextray's up. North Carolina trying to do work with two outs. They've got two on. Madeline Gates all over it, and the threat is retired. Two left on by North Carolina, no score. Kids from Portland, Oregon, representing District 4, let's meet them. Evan Morris, and I'm always first in line because I'm the shortest. Adeline Gates, but you might know me as Addy Daddy. Gianna Michika, and my fans call me Gionte. Sophia Cherry, and I'm allergic to almost everything, but I love mayonnaise. Kai 
Professor Yama, shout out to my friends and family who've supported me. Sophia Groshong, and this is my lucky hat. Lucia Renier, I just tried paddle boarding and I love it. Libby Pemble, and I like to surf. Cal and Boardwell Gray, and they call me Caltastrophe. Bridget Bowling, and I like cauliflower and scallops. Gabby Bauer, and I like anything chocolate. Sierra McKenna, and I have two amazing dogs at home. Sophia Santana, and I'm giving a shout out to my brother Alex. Aaron Bowling, manager of Oregon District 4 from Portland, Oregon. Michelle Gray, coach. Brett Bauer, coach. Oregon fans in full force to watch these young ladies play, and they're going to be facing Campbell Shane, who when you watch her pitch, she is so stoic in the circle. Yeah, she is, and she just has so much confidence and so much command when she is out there. She likes to throw a lot of screwballs. In fact, she'll throw it about 70, 75% of the time, and she likes to mix in her rise ball, too. But what makes her tricky, you guys, is the fact that her dad calls pitches from inside the dugout, and he wants to call the changeup on any count to keep the, the, other, the opposing hitters on their toes. He'll even call it on a full count. Campbell says she gets a little bit nervous, but she still is able to execute that pitch with ease. And what makes her really, really tricky is that she's left-handed. I knew oh, that was coming. coming. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> On National Left-Handers Day. <laughs> All about the lefties in this game. Hey, it's a dream come true. I mean, who could have written the script better? It's National Left-Handers Day. And we have two lefty starting pitchers. Plus you, plus Andy Jo Howard. Last year's yes. uh, champion is in the house. Oh, she right. was a pitcher and she was left-handed. Love it. Madeline Gates leading off. You guys all need a picture, I think, Michelle. That's right. It's only fitting. I was going to try to score this game with my left hand, but that seems like it's going to be really difficult, and I won't be able to read it. So <laughs> just that's an honor after you. the last recorded <laughs> yeah. or the first recorded out. Yes. I was like, mm, <laughs> maybe not. Well, then you would feel the pain of what lefties have to. When, when we were asking lefties, like, what's the best and what's the worst part of being left-handed? I think almost every left-hander will say you know, all the the pen that ends up on your hand at the end of the, right. the day or yeah. class. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unique. You, Unique. Unique. <laughs> you go. You Unique go. Unique writing styles. <laughs> <laughs> And Campbell Shane starts out with a strikeout. She had 12 strikeouts yesterday, tied for the most of any team. Going to that curveball, cuts it across the plate, right at the knees, a good frame job by Klein, her catcher working with her, her battery mate there. This Oregon team has quite a few lefties, so for Campbell Shane, it's a little bit of an advantage for her to really try to run that pitch, that curveball she likes to throw away from him. This is Callan Boardwell Gray. Her teammates told us she's probably the loudest one on the team. North Carolina has pulled second base way in. Second base in, first base is out on the grass. And look at the way the outfield has shifted as well. You've got right field and deep second, center field over. Back to back strikeouts. When you have a pitcher in the circle that's running that curveball away from the lefties, it's going to be hard to catch up. Now batting for Oregon District 4, number 22, Bridget Bowling. Erin Bowling is the team manager of this Oregon District 4 team. She's got a softball background herself, won a national championship, Division II Humboldt State as a pitcher. And there's a quick third out. A couple of strikeouts to start this one for Campbell Shane. No score. Welcome back to Alpen Rose. If you walk along the stadium here and in the concourse, you'll find several of these rocks. These are called love rocks that the Oregon team has placed all around here and given to the opponents. This was created by a local family who lost their daughters 
Abigail and Anna in a car accident outside of their house. The parents created these love rocks to share love and to share joy. You can go to love-rocks.org to read more about their story, but Oregon players said, we wanted, that is our story, to be able to share with the rest of the world and the other teams here. So they've had fun hiding 300 of these rocks all around the complex, and we've had a fun time trying to find them too, ladies. Yeah, what a great story and what a great idea. We were talking to the second baseman, Adeline Gates. She said her favorite thing about it was that there was this tra tragedy and they've turned it into something positive to spread more love in the world. That was her favorite thing. Yeah, and the fact, too, that they had enough thought to not only make 300 of them to spread all across the facilities, but to make one for every player on every team in those teams' colors, plus the umpires in red, white, and blue. Really neat idea. Just a little reminder. Let's show a little more love in the world. Yeah, good perspective, you know. When sometimes you feel like you're having a bad day or strike out. Uh, that perspective kind of... Yeah. Puts things back in order. Top of the second inning here in the semifinal, Emma Ray Klein leading off for North Carolina against Bridget Bowling. North Carolina had two on in the first inning. Couldn't bring them home. Both of those reached thanks to walks. No hits by either team yet. Hi, Hopper to Sierra McKenna. And she'll reach on the error. I think this is a little bit of communication between Gates and McKenna. They need to decide who's going to get the ball, who's going to go to the bag, and I think there was a little bit of, of that going on. Maybe Gates, the second baseman, goes to get this so McKenna can go back to the bag, but it just goes off the glove. It's one of the things we always talk about is just communicate, one go to the ball, one go to the bag. Pinch hitter for North Carolina. We do have minimum mandatory play, so you're going to see everybody come up to bat. Cassie Seckler is coming up to the plate now to pinch hit. Andy Evans is the special pinch runner at first base. Back to bowling. She's going to second. And Suyama wasn't looking for the throw. She was looking at the runner at first. They roll it an error on the throw. And it's runners on the corners. It's now two back-to-back -back plays. Michelle talking about Oregon and communication on defense. Bowling picks up this ball, and her shortstop, Suyama, was thinking that she needed to go to one, but I don't think she said anything. She didn't tell Bowling, hey, one, one, one. She just assumed that she was going to go there, and that led for Bowling to throw that ball out to center field. And you're seeing what I think is so important right now. North Carolina is putting the ball into play against Bowling, who had 10 strikeouts yesterday. They're making this Oregon defense make plays in several different ways. Cadence Lane with a great opportunity, no outs, runners on the corners. Runner going. 12th stolen base that Oregon has allowed in the tournament, second today. Bowling ahead 0-2 on Cadence Lane. We're checking the count on the scoreboard. It is 0-2. Lane is looking for her first hit at the World Series right here. 
They check the runner at third and they get her. Evans is tagged out. See that Evans is just going to be off the special pinch runner. She's waiting. She's off a little bit. And Bridget Bowling is going to get that ball over to Gabby Bauer. Snap tag down. Pick up a huge first out. And there's out number two. A strikeout follows it. First one for Bridget Bowling today. Wow, big threat for North Carolina. And two pitches. Looks like it is slightly been thwarted by this Oregon team. The nine hitter Kennedy Fisher. Yeah, it's been so much fun to watch Bridget Bowling in the circle because, and also at the plate and on the base pass because she's just always thinking in an aggressive mindset. What can I do right now? She knows the game. She knows what to look for. How can I help out my team? So on the base pass, she's constantly looking for an extra 60 feet to take, whether it's a delay steal or looking for a dropped ball where she can advance. And even that play right there, we haven't seen that all week. And she's heads up enough to catch a runner sleeping at third base and get an important out with two runners in scoring position and then get the strikeout the next pitch. Ball and two strikes to Kennedy Fisher. She's hitting 286 this week in Portland. Hear that wind and it's blowing hard in. We've seen what five home runs hit out of the park here this week. It's going to be tough to hit one out with the wind blowing like this. The Oregon defense and Bridget Bowling just going to work back to back strikeouts. Bridget Bowling being on it gets the pickoff for the first out of the inning and then picks up two big strikeouts to get out of the jam. Oregon picking up the bats. Lots of fans coming to Alpen Rose tonight for the semifinals of the Little League Softball World Series. Oregon and North Carolina in our first semifinal. Bottom of the second we go, no score. North Carolina has left three runners on. All thanks to some free passes for Oregon, but that Oregon defense really impressive in the top of this inning to get out of the jam. Quick swing from Sophia Cherry gets a hit. First hit in the game for either team. Campbell Shane had two strikeouts in the first inning. Sophia Cherry leads off this inning, swinging early in the count, putting the ball in play, trying to make something happen, knowing that she's got to get a good pitch to hit early in the count. Campbell Shane, remember, throws a lot of strikes. She's only walked one hitter this entire tournament. On well, that first inning, seven or eight pitches were strikes. Gabby Bauer next up. Two hits on the week, both of them against Team Canada. And Murray Klein behind the dish is going to watch that runner. They've only allowed one person to steal on them this week. Count evens up to Gabby Bauer. Reaches for it. Riley Hagis comes over, and they do get her. Lauren Vanderpool had to cover first. Boy, a lot of traffic down the line on this, this ball. 
hit right at Hagen. She goes and gets it. Vanderpool, though, in a situation, have to be very careful. See the way that she comes over. And Gabby Bauer avoiding the collision. You know, a lot of people sometimes ask, why isn't there the orange bag? You see that in international play. Little League rules do not have the orange bag, but that's typically why it's there, so to try to avoid when you do see that orange bag at first place, to try to avoid those collisions. But nonetheless, it moves the runner into scoring position, which is a good thing for Oregon. Sierra McKenna has Sophia Cherry on second here. Just one away. And this offense for Oregon, they, they not only came together and talked about you know their goals of communicating more and being more united, but offensively, they were talking a lot about just getting base hits. Earlier on in the tournament, they were trying for doubles, trying for triples, trying to make that extra base hit happen. But really, you know, their game is station to station, base hit after base hit, string some things together. Once yeah. they committed to that plan, they started to have more success. Yeah, not a lot of power. They know who they are. They're, they're going to have to produce runs, manufacture the runs. A 242 batting average coming in here to this game. So it's really going to be about, as you said, Amanda, productive outs and then getting that timely hit when they do have runners in scoring position. Full count here to McKenna. Runner coming home. Cherry looking to score. They make the tag. Kennedy Fisher gets it home in time. What a play by the center fielder Kennedy Fisher and also Emma Ray Klein to be able to make that tag. Sophia Cherry goes underneath the tag but love the fact that Emma Ray Klein just hung in there we might actually we might have a challenge but man that is a bang bang play at the plate but what a throw by Kennedy Fisher yeah. out in center field there is a challenge on this so they will go take another look at it added in video review last season Max Cannon is our home plate umpire who will grab pick up the phone I think it's, it looks to me like this one's going to be hard to overturn. See where her foot is on top of the catcher's foot right there, not on top of the plate. And I think that the tag gets to her before her foot touches the plate. Yeah, the original call was that she was out. That's a good look at it right That's there. A great yeah. look. Yeah. Good job, crew. What a play defensively. Wow. Yeah, great, great play. Wow. And I think that's a play where you have to send her. They are going to confirm it. We are just talking about two alleys. This Oregon team has to string things together. Yep. And you have to challenge the defense. And that's a tough play to make no matter what level you're at. Even in college, and the international ball has to be played perfectly, and it was. That could be a really big throw as this game goes on if it stays close. Here's Evan Morris. You know, we talk about base running a lot, how important it is to have good lines, to really, you know, no hesitation, no break in your momentum. So important because when you come into that close play at home plate, you know, one bad angle around a bag can be in the difference between being safe, being out, all the little things. 0-2 oh, to Morris. And you know, the fearlessness, too, of the catching position to yeah. understand what's happening. You know, as that ball is bouncing, about to bounce into your glove, that that runner is barreling in, and there's going to be some sort of collision, and Ember Ray Klein just hung in there to make that tag. Morris goes back. Shane, Dextrace has to lay out for it. It'll be a hit. Runners on the corners for Oregon. You know, not many people might think much of this play. It'll just go down as a single and advances a runner. But what Kenley Dextrace just did right there was potentially save a run.
that ball gets to the outfield. There might be another play at the plate and a run scored. Yeah. Um, yeah, I need to know what Michelle wants you to do. Go ask her and you do what she tells you to do, <laughs> steal or not. Okay. Um, I just need you to get a pinch runner in. We're going to pinch Come runner on. for you. Yeah. The whole world's watching. All right? All right. We're good. We're good. We're good. Do you want me to throw two if she goes? Huh? Do you want me to throw two if she goes? Is that girl fast? No, she's pretty fast. What I want you to do is, uh, yeah, let's do, let's just throw it back to Campbell real quick, all right? Throw it back to Campbell real quick. And you look at the girl at third, all right? Steve Yang out in the circle with his North Carolina team. There's going to be a special pinch runner at third. It'll be Sophia Santana for special Oregon. Special pinch runner for Oregon is for number 39, Sophia Santana. Okay, here we go. Find a way. Santana at third, Morris at first for Kaya Suyama. Runner going. Two in scoring position now. How about the momentum, too, that you guys, Oregon, took from defense yep. whenever Bridget Bowling had that pickoff to back-to-back -back strikeout, shut them down, took that energy into offense to threaten now? A couple of errors, didn't panic, gets out of the jam, and now here the offense is trying to get it done. Count runs 0-2. So Yama has three RBI this week, all of them against Italy. Really good at bats that we've seen by Oregon in this inning. And Sophia Cherry set the tone for this inning by going up, starting off the inning with a single, hitting early in the count. Yeah, after a one, two, three inning. Tiana hitting 333 coming into this play and game. Gets a pitch, it's elevated, doesn't try to pull it, just pops it the other way. Look at the way she barrels this up. Great back control, then just shoots it through that right side. Three hits in a row now for this Oregon team, four in the inning. That is the first run allowed by North Carolina in 15 and two thirds innings. And again, after a 1-2-3 inning in that first, Campbell Shane looked like she was in control. It comes out this inning, and Oregon making adjustments early in this game. And winning a bat by Suyama to take a couple of close pitches yep. with two strikes, she really made Campbell Shane work. And that's the first earned run that Campbell Shane has given up this entire World Series. Over 20 innings pitched. Well, one thing we're not seeing Campbell Shane use a lot is her changeup, which yeah. is the one pitch that helps set up effective velocity on pitches on the inside corner. Runners on the corners for Lucia Renier now. Oregon told us they want to prove they belong here. And that's a big way to end it. Campbell Shane with her third strikeout, but not before Oregon scores. Campbell Shane getting this last strikeout, but Oregon does get on the board first here in the semis. Oregon jumps ahead of North Carolina in this semifinal, but 
North Carolina has got their leadoff hitter going, Lauren Vanderpool, at the top of their order, and she started off their quarterfinals game with an inside the park home run yesterday. Shoots that ball down the right field line, and she's off to the races. She just looks at first base, and then she says, forget it, I'm going. And I think Coach may have tried to hold her, and she just kept going. And she scored. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. First home run for her this week. That's somebody you want at the top of your lineup. Bold, aggressive. Yeah, well, she says that she actually races her brother's yeah, baseball team, exactly. and yeah. she beats all of them, so there's that, too. <laughs> I definitely believe it after watching her run those bases yesterday. First pitch back at Bridget Bowling. She fields her position well, even under pressure. We always talk about how important it is to field your position after you let go of the ball. You become an infielder, and this ball hit right back at Bridget. She's able to knock it down. It's all about positioning, making sure your glove is in front of you. You got to end that pitch right so that you become a fielder, and that glove has to be in a good position. Pitcher versus pitcher. Campbell Shane, a very high hopper. Gabby Bauer runs on it, but the hop gives her plenty of time to make it safely. You know, I think it's going to be really important for North Carolina to not panic because of the way that they're swinging the bat so far in this game, putting the ball into play, hitting the ball hard. It's a nice job by Gabby Bauer to scoop up that hop, but even better job of Campbell Shane to run down the line, be able to get that infield single. One out, one on for Avril Harrell. She reached on a walk and stole a base in the first inning. North Carolina coming out really aggressive, swinging early in counts. Typically, you hear coaches, players talk about it all the time. It's usually where you're going to see the best pitches. Pitchers like to work ahead early. North Carolina knows what it's like to play here. This Rowan Little League team has been here several times. They lost in the championship game of regionals last year and did not make it. And these girls have remembered that for a year. Ball hops away, runner advances. Well, and they're undefeated here. They're 5-0. and Oregon's record, on the other hand, 3-2. and Won that game yesterday in the quarterfinals to make it here. But... North Carolina's yet to lose, but we already have seen an upset. Yeah, and you mentioned it earlier that in round robin play, North Carolina beat Oregon seven to one. Yes. Put some big runs up on the board against both of the Oregon pitchers. North Carolina had 11 hits against Oregon in that first meeting. And that biggest upset that we've seen was Italy taking down Hawaii last night. What a game by them. Hawaii was undefeated going into that game. And Italy was a Come week on, one and three. up there, kid. Let's go. North Carolina 5-0. and oh, A couple of shutouts over their last two opponents. Not today. Oh. Count's going to run full to Avril Harrell. be really big if North Carolina could answer back here. You're at the top of your lineup. You have a runner in scoring position. And somebody punches you, you want to punch them right back in this game. Harrell, a deep shot that's grabbed by Rinye, who's going around. The runner's going. Shane slides. And I think Morris Arenye out in the outfield didn't realize that there was just one out and the fly recorded was the second. You could see the tag up by Campbell Shane and Steve Yang is going to just waver all the way around. That ball was hit deep enough. 
So again, important to know every situation, make that catch in the outfield, get it in immediately. Just like that, score even. It looks like North Carolina is going to use a pinch hitter here. Everyone has to come up to the plate and have an at-bat, so you'll start to see the substitutions roll in now. And I think after Rainier caught this ball, they're talking about it and ar almost arguing because Morris came over and Rainier called it, and Morris is being a center fielder. If she calls it, hey, that's my ball. And while they're arguing, Campbell Shane comes around to score. Don't you think, though, that when Campbell Shane was headed towards third base and Coach Yang was sending her, she was like, wait, are, she had to really trust him because yeah. she probably knew that that fly ball was caught. And then she's like, wait, do you really want me to go home right now? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm trusting you with everything right now. And she ties up the game. And Oregon is going to go ahead and make a sub in right field. Sophia Groshong comes in to take over for Renier. Now batting for Team Southeast, number 17, Andy Evans. Andy Evans up with two outs. Nobody on. Evan's one of the youngest on this North Carolina team. And that's strikeout number three for Bridget Bowling. We got a tie ball game in our first semifinal. A summer of softball has come down to these four teams on the Little League stage. Oregon and North Carolina playing in our first semifinal. We're going to see Louisiana and Italy face off later tonight. Italy, a team who upset Hawaii, who is undefeated here at the World Series. That was a big game yesterday in the quarterfinals. Yeah, we've got a, a great crowd, amazing ice cream, you guys, and even better softball. The softball type tops the ice cream, which is really saying something. <laughs> that's, a bit, that's a bold statement. <laughs> that is a bold statement. <laughs> Tie game in the bottom of the third inning. This is Sophia Santana at the plate. They call her Lightning McQueen because she's got some speed. They'll say she did go. Ball and two strikes to Santana. Rolls it to first, Hayes makes the tag. Well, to catch the excitement of the Little League World Series softball tournaments or to find a Little League softball program in your neighborhood, visit littleleaguesoftball.org. Ten teams earn the right to play here in Portland, Oregon at the Little League Softball World Series. We made it down to eight for the bracket portion of the tournament. Now just four remain. One of the key components of Little League softball is mandatory play, so that's why you're seeing the managers make all the substitutions. Everybody has the opportunity to play in the game. This is Gianna Michike, a.k.a. Giance. Giance is what they call her. It's, some, it's like an alter ego that she's adopted with the team. <laughs> she's a celebrity 
We were told that she sto stores all of her money in a volcano. Primarily gold, I think. Yes. She says. <laughs> we have all the players fill out questionnaires, and besides telling us about her alter ego, G Giance, she also said her best sports moment was. She gave her mom a bloody nose when she was hitting a wiffle ball. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if her mom feels like that was a great moment. Yeah, seriously. Cadence Lane with the grab. Now batting for Oregon District Floor number 22, the pitcher, Bridget This is Bridget Bowling, Bowling leading Oregon, hitting 500 with a team leading four RBI and eight hits. Doesn't have a hit today. Drops just foul. You can tell that she's one of those players who will take the game into her hands. We've already seen her do it defensively when she's in the circle. Running on the bases yesterday in the quarterfinal. Her mom talked about it. She has X-factor qualities, both in the circle with the bat. Her mom pitched. She's just a mentally strong kid. And you know, sometimes you, you have to be when things start to fall off, wheels start to fall off the wagon when you're in the circle or in the box. You have to be mentally strong, emotionally strong. Hopes that your mom was a pitcher, so she's been there That's during right. that. And even her little sister Paige, who's nine, she's also a pitcher. Her mom was successful, right? Humble yeah. State, won a championship. Yeah, won a national, national championship. championship. Yeah. She showed us her national championship ring. That was so cool. Very. Although she is not the pitching coach for Bridget. <laughs> she is for everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> But how funny is it that at their little league, at age eight, every single softball player pitches? I, I mean, love every it. single one, they take lessons, and then from there, they decide, all right, does, do these kids like it? Who likes it? Yeah. Who yeah. wants to do it? The weeding out process. <laughs> yeah. is it, uh, do they weed them out, or do the kids weed themselves out? They're yeah. like, ah, this right. is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Drop third strike. Yeah. Number four for Campbell Shane. Still tied up here in Portland. Baseball. And that's it! It allows you to lose yourself in a dream. Look at oh the to feel and remember a season of life when summer lasted forever. Have fun playing baseball. It's never going to be any better than this. The Little League Baseball World Series gets underway Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can see all the games on our ESPN family of networks. We have the Little League Softball World Series going on here in Portland, Oregon, on the other side of the country. Semifinal, the first one of the day between North Carolina and Oregon, tied up at 1. We get set for the top of the fourth. Number 21, Kinley Dextrace. Kinley Dextrace will lead off for this North Carolina team. They're out of Salisbury, North Carolina, facing Oregon from right here in Portland. Guys, I asked Bridget earlier today who she talks to, her mom or her dad when she gets nervous. And she goes, oh, definitely mom, because she's cool and calm. She goes, my dad gets so worked up that he just paces the concourse. I spotted him, he found a, some shade, but he has uh, definitely moved a little bit throughout the game. <laughs> That's Brian Bowling, Bridget's father. Her mom is the manager of the Oregon District 4 team. I'm sure us filming him makes him a little more nervous, too. Yeah. <laughs> Dex Trace with a hit to lead off here in the fourth for North Carolina. I really don't know what's more nerve-wracking, to be a pitcher or to be a pitcher's parent. Because yeah. every pitcher's parent has stories yeah. and good and bad about being a pitcher's parent. Just how nervous they get because you have no control over what's going on. Yeah. More the 
like a nervous breakdown. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember your parents getting nervous when you pitched? My mom more so than my dad, yeah. and she would agree with. Oh, me. I was the yeah. opposite. My my dad was always he would disappear. I'd be like, oh, he must have left the stadium. You know, my mom would sit up there and pray and. <laughs> Because at least when you're pitching, you have the ball in your hand. You have control yeah. over what's going on as a parent. You're just sitting there hoping and yeah. praying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. North Carolina is going to pinch hit Carmen Freeze, a 200 hitter this week at the World Series. But you, you know, you can tell that Bridge and Bowling is has been raised to be a leader for this team because she was the one who called the team meeting that got everybody together that said, hey, let's remember our goals. Let's remember what we want to accomplish whenever we go out and play. And this was Sunday night before bracket play started, yeah. before the quarterfinals. Yeah, because they were 2-2. Two and two. I mean, they stepped their toe early in the tournament. They were nervous. and Runners going. Sophia Cherry gets the ball there in time. Sophia Cherry is going to pop up behind the dish, get that ball down to Suyama. Ball down, tag applied. The question is, did the foot get to the bag before the tag up on the hip? It's hard to tell from that angle. Close play. The umpire is right on top of it, but it looks like... Um, yeah, they will challenge this. Coach is trying to decide what they're going to do, if they're going to challenge it. They will challenge it. Let's see if this angle is a little bit better. I feel like this is going to be a, another difficult one to overturn the call on the yeah, field. Right there, she's out. Yeah, it, just barely. Another bang yeah. bang play. Yeah, and the umpire is in a great position. He's looking right there. There's an umpire at every base. I, I think the tag just barely gets on her yeah. right before her cleat touches that bag. The original call was that she was out. I just think it's I think hard this to is the otherwise. Yeah, this is the best angle right here, I think, to try to figure out. It's hard to tell when the foot. Yeah. From behind, you can't tell when the foot hits. It's hard to tell in the front as well. Maybe this, this is the angle. It's tough. It's like wiffle ball. Tie goes to the runner. <laughs> <laughs> when you're young. How many times you said that? To me, it doesn't look like there's enough evidence to yeah. overturn. <laughs> well, the call is going to stand. She's out. Great toss by Sophia Cherry. Yeah, that throw is on the money. Yep. And Suyama holding on to it through the tag and the runner sliding in. Carmen Free is still at the plate with a 1-1 count, now a 1-2 count. Nobody on now with an out. We have seen some really good defensive yeah. plays in this game. And a lot of fun to watch. On um, both sides. Yeah. yeah. A couple errors early for Oregon, and they come right back. You know, and they're aggressive. I love that. <laughs> Number four for Bridget Bowling. Bowling starting to locate her pitches. Take a, took a little bit off of that last pitch, I think. Yeah, to, I think so too. Yeah, to full freeze. Adeline Gates making sure that, sure that shoe's tied at second base, real quick. And Bowling has had four strikeouts, you guys, but three of them have been looking strikeouts. So. North Carolina needing to protect with two strikes. Give themselves a chance. This is Ashley Yang's first look at Bridget Bowling since Saturday when they played each other during pool play. Right over the head of McKenna. Third 
hit for North Carolina. Ashley Yang swings early into count, goes with an outside pitch, stays on it just enough to shoot it the other way. Love to see these hitters hitting early in the count. That's Ashley Yang's having herself a World Series. Four for seven with two RBI here. She's been here as a younger spectator when her sister was playing in the Little League Softball World Series. If you watched our intros, you heard she said, if you don't know, my sister Ellen played here, and then she rolled her eyes. <laughs> well, that's because Ellen actually won here. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure she hears that all the time. And in so, 2015. So sister Ashley is like, well, guess what? We're going to work hard to win here. Yeah. And she's <laughs> doing her best. She's had a good, as you mentioned, Amanda, she's had a good tournament. She told our crew to make sure you get the eye roll on camera for the intros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so sister to sister. Yeah, that one is here. That's right. This is Cadence Lane at the plate. Oh, I'm sorry. Arabelle Schulenberger is at the plate. We had a pinch hitter come in. Four hits on the week for Schulenberger. Yeah. Number five for Bowling. Starting to feel it in the circle for Bridget Bowling in a tie game. Welcome back to Portland, one all in the fourth. This North Carolina team was back at the hotel yesterday when they watched Italy upset Hawaii. And they figured that this Italy team didn't have a big fan base here and didn't understand how big of an upset. So they wanted to throw them their own surprise party. They got them pizzas and cake. And when the Italy came back to the hotel, they had no idea. They've become really close with this team. And this is one of the things you love about this tournament is just the friendships that have been created between the different countries. Chris, you could tell that meant so much to the girls from Italy when we talked to them this afternoon. They said, you know, we were just expecting you to go back to the hotel and eat some pizza. And then we saw North Carolina there with the balloons and streamers. And how cool is that? Just so much thought and care. It's a really cool thing. And <laughs> Cherry takes it to short. When we asked North Carolina what their favorite memory has been so far from the World Series, they went to that moment. They said immediately making friends with Italy, Italy and then yeah. we said, you know, we even threw them a party last night. But they've been really close with that team from Italy. Yeah, during this week that they're here at the Little League Softball World Series, there's opportunities for them to hang out with other teams. There's barbecues and team parties, and they all stay in the same hotel together. There's a player lounge we learned about today with a braid bar. You get your hair braided. Nice. I wanted to sneak over to the braid bar, and right away, one of the coaches for North Carolina said, nope, player only. Player only. Player, yeah. Players only in there. And I said, all right, well, never mind. That's why you, you see a lot of the players with braids in their hair is because of that. But it's a whole experience, and part of that experience is getting to meet the international teams and teams from across the U.S. too. Yeah. And I thought it was really touching, too, you guys, how North Carolina looked up how to say congratulations in Italian for when the Italy team arrived to the hotel that they could, you know, show a little bit even more effort to try to reach out to them. Because that was a big deal. Italy was one in three. Yeah. And they beat an undefeated Hawaii team yes. who was averaging... Very well played game for Italy, and just you could see the excitement. We'll be seeing them coming up here in uh, about a, what an hour or so. Yeah, Less than an hour. That's right. Yeah, 9:30 Eastern here on ESPN2. We will have the second semifinal between Italy and Louisiana. It'll be big for Louisiana. They've been here before. Last year, weren't able to make it to the championship game. It's still impressive that Campbell Shane just doesn't really hurt herself out there. She'll give up you know, a few hits here and there, but still no walks that she's given up in this game. One walk the entire tournament. And she gave up those four hits in that second inning, but you can tell she made some adjustments. I'm sure she went in and spoke with her dad who calls the pitches. 
Had to decide what sort of adjustments that uh, need to be made, and they've done so. And she gets another strikeout to get out of the fourth. That's number five for Campbell Shane. Well, even though we have two lefters in the circle on National Left-Handers Day, it's been the defense that's been shining. Look at the plays by Oregon. Up the middle, getting it done, pickoffs. Yeah, and then this play out in center field by Kennedy Fisher, throwing it in to her catcher, Emma Ray Klein, for the tag and the assist. And, oh, that one hit off of Bridget Bowling, still able to make the out. Throwing out runners from behind the dish. Everybody's getting involved. Yeah. Everybody. The defense just putting on a show on both sides. And how about, like, you just threw in the left-hander thing. Of course she did. Just totally off the wall. Like, even though it's left-handers day, let's talk about this defense. Yeah. <laughs> there are some lefties making plays in the defense yeah, package. Right. That's right. <laughs> it's always relative and relevant. <laughs> Kennedy Fisher is up now for North Carolina. She's the one that made that toss home. Powerful arm. You know, Coach told us she turns doubles into outs, and if she calls it, then they've told everybody else just to get out of the way and let her do her <laughs> thing. <laughs> and she's 11. Yeah, Coach Yang was really bragging on her defensive skills. Says that she's one of the best center fielders I've ever seen at this age. When she proved it with that throw home. I mean, could you ask for more in a semifinal game to make it to the Little League World Series championship game? What a game that this has been. Michelle wants some more lefties. That would be about it. <laughs> She's some seen a lefty every moment. single pitch, and she wants more? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Asked Michelle yesterday, or this morning, I think that's when it was, hey, when's National Right-Hander Day? She's every day. Every day. Every day, except today. <laughs> <laughs> Fisher takes a cut at it. That's number six for bowling. We'll have our first NFL preseason game with John Gruden and the Raiders taking on Cliff Kingsbury's Cardinals Thursday at 8 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Joe Tessitore and Booger McFarlane on the call with Lisa Salters on the field. Coverage begins at 7 with a special edition of Monday Night Countdown. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Bridget Bowling as we go to the top of the order for North Carolina with Lauren Vanderpool. Has yet to reach today. And bowling really settling in since those two walks in that first inning and then the two errors in the second inning. She struck out six of the last 11 for those looking. Really starting to get comfortable in that circle. Amanda, you know what it's like. I mean, you have those games, sometimes they start off slow, your pitches aren't working or you're missing spots, and it's just mentally, it's a matter of just staying in there, your defense helping you out, and just trying to find that one or two adjustments that you make to work to turn things around. And that's why that, that in-between inning conversation in the dugout with your pitching coach is just so important. And coming up with a routine, too, of like, okay, what information do I want? What's going to make me better? And then what? how can I get into a place in the dugout where I'm going to be mentally ready to go and attack the next inning? And in-game adjustments is what it's all about, hitting-wise, pitching-wise, defensive shift-wise. I mean, you have to be able to make adjustments all throughout the game and every single aspect of it. Full count for Lauren Vanderpool. Drops into the glove of Groshon. Nice sliding grab. <laughs> 
Roshan comes in as a, a defensive substitute earlier in the game, and I love the way that she just keeps her eye on the ball, knowing that she's going to have to go down, makes the catch. She's got her shades on. Added to her defensive playlist That's in right. that truck. Let's Outstanding. go. Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding effort. And she's playing deep, so she had a long way to come in. And yeah. again, it's that communication with her center fielder. Campbell Shane to shallow left. Just making things happen. Her second single tonight. And Campbell Shane just finding a hole, but going up there swinging. This pitch was moving up and away from her. Doesn't try to swing too big. She just gets to contact and is able to find a hole out there between shortstop and left field. Now batting for Team Southeast, number 10, Avril Harrell. She came across home plate on the fly ball to right field in the third inning. That was when there was the miscommunication out in the outfield for Oregon, and she scored from second on a fly ball. Oh. This is Avril Harrell. Gotten on with a walk. That was back in the first inning. Stole a base there, too. Suyama crashing in on it, and the throw is off target. Shane holds up at third. Runners on the corners. This is a really tough play for Suyama because it's slowly developing she's going to charge in and try to get this out on the run throw gets away from her just a little bit good job by mckenna over at first to make sure that harold does not advance the second but campbell shane now at third base 60 feet away from going on top runner going Two in scoring position, just like that, with Riley Hagis at the plate. Shane on third, Harrell on second. Riley Hagis sends it deep, and it's caught. Two big catches out there in right for Groshong. Keeps the score even at a run apiece. Pay close attention to the little leaguers you see playing here in Alp at Alpen Rose because we might see them on the college stage someday. Players like Kelly Barnhill, Jenny Ritter, all started at a young age playing softball, falling in love with the sport, and now they're playing on a big stage on the softball diamond. You gotta start somewhere. Absolutely. I think every elite softball player will look back and remember that grassroots softball that they played. Those fond memories, probably coached by a parent or a neighbor's parent. And played with the community-based softball or maybe some travel ball and kind of hone those skills. This is Evan Morris up against Campbell Shane. I feel like, too, that's where some of my first friends that I remember... My first friendships were formed is on the softball field. Yeah, you, you, you have your school friends, but like outside of school, making new friends. Riley Hagis all over it at first. Eight straight retired. Well, to catch the excitement of the Little League World Series softball tournaments or to find and a Little League softball program in your neighborhood, visit littleleaguesoftball.org. Might see you here at the Little League World Series someday. The shortstop, oh. Kaya Suyama. Yeah, and this Oregon team, too, has inspired a whole other group of girls because their Little League is actually just softball only, which is really unique. There you go. Suyama. She gets two.
That's the fourth extra base hit for Oregon in this tournament. Siana's going to get a pitch that stays over the white part of the play. She just steps in the bucket and just slices it the opposite way. And then she is off to the races. She had an RBI single in the second. That's how Oregon got on the board. Yeah. Now, now a double. 333 average coming into this game, and now she's two for two. Well, and remember, Suyama had a really great district, and particularly she played well in that tournament to be able to get them here, but she had an injury. Jammed her finger earlier on in this tournament, and she was struggling a little bit at the plate, but just finding her swing when it has mattered most. They're going to use a special pinch runner for Kaya Suyama. It'll be Sophia Santana. You get two special pinch runners per game. You can only use one in an inning. But Santana is the fastest base runner on this Oregon team, so you got to watch her. This is Sophia Groshong, who was playing out in right field for Oregon. I think they were given a pair of sunglasses to Avril Harrell out in right field. That sun is directly in her face. It's a big deal, too, for Oregon to get an extra base hit. Coming into this game, through five games, they'd only had three total extra base hits. So extra bases have been hard to come by, but important to move her in a scoring position instantly. Yeah, that's their third double of the tournament. And yeah, this is definitely a station-to-station -station team. They have to manufacture runs, pick up that extra 60 feet by having productive outs. They say she did go three balls and a strike to Groshon. <laughs> exact same. Wow. <laughs> Full count now. And that's a strikeout for Campbell Shane. She's at six. Now batting for Oregon District Four. Top of the order and Adeline Gates. Gates with two outs and a runner on. Yeah, lefties have had it tough going up against Shane in this game. The majority of Shane's strikeouts have come against the left-handed hitters in the lineup. Two balls to the outside. Gates struck out her first time up against Campbell Shane tonight. Thing that, the thing that you love about the situation that Oregon's in right now, too, you push across that run, and you're three outs away from winning a game and finding yourself in the championship game. That's only the second walk for Campbell Shane in this tournament. So it's runners on first and second. And Gianna Michike comes in to hit. Lined one to third in the third inning. Oh. 
first pitch strike from Shane. I think he's trying to get another right-handed yeah. hitter in. Callan Bordwell Gray, who started this game, a left-handed hitter for Oregon, but Mitch K has now had back-to-back -back at bats. Tried to take that curveball away from her. She throws it a little bit underneath the hands of the righties, but mostly stays on that outside corner. Two balls and a strike. Gates at first, Santana at second. Big K for Campbell Shane. Seven of them tonight. How about the emotion for Campbell Shane picking up her seventh strikeout of the afternoon and none bigger. Getting out of it, Campbell Shane. Going into the sixth inning, and we've got a tied semifinal game. What more could you want here? Both teams, though, have had problems bringing runners home. North Carolina has left six on base. Four of those were in scoring position. Oregon has left four on with two in scoring position. You ask any coach at any division, what, what do you need to win championships? And it's obviously pitching and defense, but it's timely hitting. Got to turn those lobs, those LOBs into RBIs. Little League, you only play six innings. Last one of regulation here. We'll see what happens. Lexi Ritchie will get her first at bat of the night. So Lex is batting for Dex, huh? Oh, yeah, the Lex and Dex duo, Lexi Ritchie and Kenley Dextrace, they are the bead bracelet duo of the team. They make bead bracelets for everybody. I think we talked with them about it. We were like, well, yeah. where are bead bracelets? And they're like, oh, no, 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 we do not have time to make yeah. bead bracelets. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to make us some. To Say, yeah, by tomorrow. Yes, by tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, so we were pushing for today, and they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> It takes a lot of time, yeah. that's yeah. what they told us. <laughs> You're like, oops, sorry, okay. <laughs> Don't mean to rush you. <laughs> but the players all have one, the coaches have one. They have their own bead bracelet Instagram account. Here's what Alexa I love about Dex. it, ladies. When you ask them, like, why'd you start selling them? And they said, well, we like making them. I want to make some money. Yeah. <laughs> so they're smart, is they what you're saying, saying, Chris. Exactly. <laughs> They're fiscally minded. <laughs> Full count here for Lexi Ritchie. Another K for Bridget Bowling. A nice way to start off the sixth. And Richie has such a small strike zone, but she finds herself reaching for that one as it would have been ball four. Had a little bit of up movement to it. As a hitter, you want to go up there and get the big hit, but so important and know your strike zone. She had so much patience within that at bat, except for that one. Seven Ks for Bridget Bowling. This is the catcher, Emma Ray Klein. Reached on an error in this second. Oh, I thought Sierra McKenna yeah. almost got her glove on that one. Nice reach. Winner of this game will move on to our championship tomorrow night at 10 Eastern on ESPN. They'll get either Louisiana or Italy, who will play later tonight at 9.30 Eastern. 
Klein grounds out to Gates at second. Now batting for Team Southeast, number 18, Ashley Yang. Ashley Yang got her first at bat tonight in the fourth inning and got a single off of it to right field. One of North Carolina's five hits on the evening. Likes the first pitch she sees. Gates is able to recover nicely. Three up, three down. Adeline Gates has been all over the field. Love the way that she's going to knock this down and takes her time, gets it over to first base. McKenna to get the out. Big smile, well deserved. We'll see Italy coming up in our second semifinal. They will take on Louisiana. Tie game as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. This Oregon team four years ago came to watch the Little League Softball World Series here in Alpenrose in their backyard. They formed a team with a goal to get here, and now they have a chance to walk off into the championship game right here against North Carolina. And look at the crowd that they get to play in front of right here for the semifinal with a chance to make it and do it in front of their home crowd. This crowd is rocking for them. Bowling hits one back at Campbell Shane. One away. They've talked about this moment for a long time. They got a core group of five players together four years ago with the hopes of making it here to Alpenrose. And this is their chance to do it and move on in a tie game. Well, and how about a, a two and two record coming into the basically championship play and had a, had a meeting, pulled everybody together and said, you know what, we want to prove we deserve to be here. We're going to go out there, we're going to set goals, and they did it. They won that quarterfinal, and here they are playing into the sixth inning in a tied game against a team that beat them 7-1 to one earlier in this tournament. And it's not just the people, you guys, that are here to watch the game that are in the bowl back behind the field. There are so many people all down the lines here wanting to see this team play, wanting to see this semifinal action to see who's going to make it to the championship game. Sophia Cherry, Skyward. Vanderpool makes out number two. Now batting for team Oregon District 4, number 26, Gabby Bauer. It comes down to Gabby Bauer to extend this inning. If not, we're going to extras. You know, ever since that second inning, whenever Oregon strung some hits together and ended up scoring, Campbell Shane's done a nice job of settling in. Has had a couple of three up, three down innings. Bauer with a chopper to Kane's lane. She's safe at first. The inning continues. Lane with a nice effort going into that 5-6 hole. Just pops off the glove. Looks like they're going to charge an air to, to Lane over at third. And in steps in Sierra McKenna. Singled in the second inning. Last time against this North Carolina team in pool play, not able to get a hit, 0 for 2, but she's already got one tonight off of Campbell Shane. A run wins it for Oregon. Shoots 
it to center, two on. When Oregon has had success against Campbell Shane, they've used the middle of the field and they've used the ground. They've shortened up their swings and just gone back to that station to station offense. That's given them so much success here at the World Series. Josh Shane is going to come out to the circle. He's the pitching coach for this North Carolina team. Oregon was able to get a runner on thanks to an error, just the fourth error by this North Carolina defense in the World Series. And then they followed up with a single by Sierra McKenna. Now would be that great time to start to think about using that changeup more. Michelle, we've been thinking about it, I think, all game for Campbell Shane as Oregon started to get their bat on the ball a little bit. And I think this is the hitter that Campbell Shane needs to go after. Morris a little lefty and Suyama up behind her, who's a right-handed hitter, who's two for two on the day. Outfielders have moved in with Evan Morris at the plate. Got a hit in the second inning. Ball and two strikes now to Evan Morris. Two on. Winning run at second. <laughs> Stays alive. Good job of protecting. Love it's it. Tough to lay off of when the umpires call on that pitch on the outside corner. It forces you to have to get that bat head out there. Just get rid of it until you get a better pitch to, to try to drive back up the middle. You know, she's going to go to that curveball again, yeah. moving away from her. Good job. It's a tough position to be in as a hitter. This is one I'd love to see her throw that change up. Just have confidence in it. Your head one and two. Seventh pitch of the at bat will come here from Campbell Shane. Two on, two out. Oregon looking to walk off into the final. Look at this. Keep sticking with that curveball in the outside corner, huh? <laughs> I feel like we're watching this on a loop. <laughs> send us to extra innings in our first semifinal in the Little League Softball World Series. First time in extras here at this year's World Series. Now we're going to play the seventh inning like normal, but starting in the top of the eighth, they will place a runner on second for each inning that we play all the way through extras, but that's not until the eighth inning. It was Oregon who struck first in the second inning, and then North Carolina responded in the third. We've got a new pitcher for Oregon in the circle. Callan Boardwell Gray will come in to pitch. And remember the pitching rules. You can't pitch more than 12 innings in a day, and if you pitch seven or more innings, you can't pitch the next day. So if one of these teams were to play tomorrow, they would have to rest their pitcher. And so that's part of the 
the kind of the zigging and the zagging. It's the coach's philosophy and decisions. What do you do? Do you throw your ace out there? Do you keep her out there? Do you go to your number two? Well, and, and Oregon has to show their hand first. Now yes. North Carolina gets to make a decision yes, of what they want to do based off of what Oregon just showed. And based on whether or not they score or not. Yeah, true. Yep. So Bridget Bowling has moved out to left field. That's where Boardwell Gray was playing. And that last, the bottom of the six was intense. I caught myself holding my breath for both of these teams. <laughs> you know, they've played a whole summer of softball looking to get to this point and the championship game. And here we are in extras. Cadence Lane will get the first look at Callan Boardwell Gray. This is the first time that Boardwell Gray has pitched in the World Series this week. Stepping in to get it done. These teams first met on Saturday during pool play. North Carolina won that one seven to one and had 11 hits off of Oregon. Hmm. Callan will actually throw a knuckleball change up a couple of days ago when we had a chance to talk to Coach Bowling. She told us that Callan had a knuckleball change up, so be on the lookout for that. We will too. to Cadence Lane. She's 0 for 1, struck out in the second inning. Pops up. Battle is there. So Callan's no, grandmother, Dawn, is in the stands Jenny today. Callan lists her as her role model. That's because Grandma Dawn beat breast cancer a year ago. She is in remission. Dawn is also the mom, uh, Callan's mom, Michelle, who's an assistant coach. And if you've been watching Grandma Dawn, now that her granddaughter's in the circle, she is so nervous. <laughs> They're going to say that hit Kennedy Fisher when she was out of the box. Well, this is a big moment for Callan to come into having not thrown in this World Series, being called to in a semifinal game. And that ball hits down on the ground. And the question is whether or not she's in the box or out of the box. It looked like maybe she was in the box. And I think that's what Steve is going to ask. If she's in the box, it would be a foul ball. If she's out of the box, then certainly if it hits her, she would be out. So Steve Yang, the manager for North Carolina, is challenging this call. Each team gets two challenges per game. As you can keep them as long as you keep winning the challenge. So the question is, is that front foot here is a good look at it. You see if you can see right here. I don't know if she had put her front foot um, down yet. Right. Yeah, it yeah. almost looks like that front foot is in the air and the ball comes down yeah. and hits her. The ball hits her there and she's got her foot up, the other foot in the box. Yeah, so I, I think that would be considered still in the box with that back foot. It's hard because that chalk line yeah. has worn off, yes, too. Yeah, and, and the perspective, the angle of this, it's kind of tough to tell exactly. But to me, it does look like maybe she's still on the front of the box. 
So North Carolina only lost, has already lost one challenge in this game. So if they lost this one, then they would be out of challenges. Correct. Although you get an extra one, an extra yeah, innings. And the extra innings, yeah. Does that add on to the Do ones you that you get three? Yeah. Mm. I believe that's just, it's one extra for each team and extra innings. Okay. Yes. This is the longest challenge that we've had. Yeah. They're really looking at it. It's an important one, too, because you want Kennedy Fisher to have another chance, potentially get on base, because you have the top of your order who would be on deck and Lauren Vanderpool. Yeah, number nine hitter. See what they decide. Oh, they say she <laughs> was in the box. The call is the, you're at the <laughs> edge of your seat because yeah. it he points oh. and then it's like, oh, no, okay. just double. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I was waiting for him to be like, say yeah, me yeah, too. like, no. It's a dramatic moment. Extra innings in the semifinals. This is World Series. So North Carolina will get to keep that challenge. And the count's going to be 0-2. Hit it hard. Come on. Our home plate umpire, Max Cannon, is double checking the count right now. The scoreboard says two outs. But it should just be one out. One out. One strike on the bat. One strike on the bat. And they're saying the count's 0 and 1. The scoreboard still says two outs, but that's not correct. And they just fix it. Yeah, they're on it. They're on it. It's a really big adjustment for the North Carolina hitters to go from brook bowling, throwing left-handed, throwing mid to upper 50s, to now dropping it down to mid 40s, lower 40s when she throws that knuckleball at yep. 40. It's a big speed differential that they're having to deal with now that Boardwalk Gray is, is pitching for them. Fisher goes and gets it. And Bridget Bowling, who just <laughs> went out to left field, makes a nice grab. Callan's grandma, Dawn, loves it. It's <laughs> awesome. Two down as they go to the top of the order with Lauren Vanderpool. First pitch strike. Callan coming in and just throwing strikes and getting out. That's what it's all about. We talk about it, Amanda, all the time. What, what do you need to do to be successful in the circle? Throw strikes, just get out. And it doesn't matter how you do it. Every pitcher right. is going to be different with their strengths and their best pitches and what they look like. But at the end of the day, your job as a pitcher is to get out Outs. any way possible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's never <laughs> about the velocity or this pitch, that pitch. It's out. What a time to come in and throw your first pitches, though, in the yes. semifinal Not of the World Series. And the she, first time. And she's going right at them, going yeah. right at the hitters. <laughs> first time in this tournament that she's pitched. Absolutely love that 
one. Callan <laughs> Boardwell Gray, her first inning here at the World Series. She goes three up, three down, and now Oregon has a chance to walk off. This one's been so good, I keep forgetting we have another semifinal coming up. Louisiana waiting to play Italy after we finish up this one in extra innings, bottom of the seventh, and a new pitcher in the circle for North Carolina, Carmen Freeze. Well, Carmen's the number two pitcher on this North Carolina team. She likes to throw a two-seam fastball, a change-up, a curveball, and really the key for Carmen, the coaches say, is just to go right at hitters. Let her defense work behind her and work from ahead. Limit the free passes. And we're seeing these pitching changes because, again, in Little League, if you pitch seven or more innings, you have to have a calendar day of rest the next day. And tomorrow is the championship game. One of these teams will be playing in that championship game. You see it all in this game. We've seen challenges, plays at the plate, great pitching, strategic moves by the coaches. A great crowd, too. I just yeah. can't get over it. Kaya Suyama will lead off. No better way to start. She's had an RBI single and a double. the end of the bat, Freeze fields it. Had some more shuffling around for the defense for North Carolina too. We can see how they're gonna react with now the fact that Riley Hakus is at third base. Cadence Slam, we have a new catcher back behind the plate and then Campbell Shane moving over to first. This is Sophia Groshong. Is Freeze just not such a great last name as a pitcher? Yeah. I mean, totally. Freezeism. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many nicknames you can make out of that. Oh, yeah. So good. Yeah. It's way better than Scarborough. I mean, or Smith. Groshon is still looking for her first hit at the World Series this week. And she's got a full count. <laughs> it was so close. And she has, you know, she really does have a pretty swing. I think she's just a little tentative yeah. on making that decision. Ball strike, am I swinging, am I not? A little bit of hesitation. Her swing really is, is pretty when yeah. she does attack the ball. Eighth pitch of the at bat. She's going to walk. Her fourth walk of the tournament. That's an important one, too, because it turns over the order now for their leadoff hitter, Adeline Gates, to come up, who's had a really great World Series, but the tough game against Campbell Shane in that lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, but very, very capable hitter with a lot of tools. That's 
the name of the game right there, Michelle. Just throw strikes. Yep. Give yourself a chance. Good pitch by Freeze on that 2-0 count just to bring one more over the plate. Get back into her rhythm. You can tell that hip at times gets a little bit early. The arm pops off the side, and that's why that ball shoots low and outside to lefties, or it would be low and into righties. Got to open that hip a little bit more. Two walks in a row. Winning run is on second right now with Callan Boardwell Gray up. Oregon looking to walk off in front of a home crowd. This Portland team about 10 miles away, not far at all from Alpen Rose. This will be Josh Shane into the circle again for North Carolina. Gotta really wait for it. Wait for it. You know what? It's not about you getting there. It's about yeah. you getting the ball down. Yes. Okay? And we're going to get yes. the girls over. Yep. Okay? All right. Hey, hey. Come on. It's simple, but just so impactful yeah. right there as a reminder. Hey, it's not about you. It's about getting your teammates 60 feet closer to scoring and moving them over so somebody else can now come up after you. She ends up getting a hit, that's great, but at the very least, you want to move these runners up 60 feet. On a completely different defense now for North Carolina as well as you mentioned earlier. Amanda. That's her grandmother looking on. Two strikes on Boardwell Gray. First strikeout for Carmen Freeze for North Carolina. Carmen Freeze gonna go up in the zone, extend, expand the zone with two strikes, and she gets Wardwell Gray to chase it for an important second out. And she has to go up against arguably the best hitter in this Oregon lineup in Bridget Bowling. Came into the game hitting 500 to lead Oregon. Has not gotten a hit yet, but this is the first time she's gone against Carmen Freeze. Pops up. Pegas grabs it. We play on to the eighth inning we go in this semifinal. Still playing this first semifinal game at the Little League Softball World Series in extras. The top of the eighth inning, which means they're going to place a runner on second. This is new this year in Little League to start the tiebreaker. Each half inning after this, including this one, they're going to place a runner on second, and it's the player who is scheduled to bat last in the inning. So Lauren Vanderpool will start on second. She's got a lot of speed, so that's a good news for North Carolina, and they've got Campbell Shane at the plate, a 500 hitter who already has two singles tonight. Typically, an international tiebreaker, you would try to bunt that runner over to third, but you've got Campbell Shane up, so it's a tough decision. Do you let her hit away? You don't want to potentially give up her out. Or just ask her to hit the ball to the right side, hit behind your teammate to try to move him up 60 feet. 
There's that knuckleball coming down to 39 miles an hour. She gets a little smile out of Campbell Shane. Like, yeah, I saw it. I know what that is. Campbell Shane to shallow right center. They're going to hold up Vanderpool at third. Oh, it gets away from Cherry. She slides across the plane and is safe. North Carolina takes a 2-1 lead. Campbell Shane has been clutch this entire tournament. She drives the ball into the outfield and then the throw gets away from Oregon. It's back to the dish and you gotta love that Vanderpool being aggressive. She sees it goes back to the fence and is gonna score. And more importantly also puts Campbell Shane out at second with that throw coming in. And so another opportunity to score some more runs for North Carolina. They rule the run scored on the error on the throw. And the outfield for Oregon is playing so deep. Evan Morris, the center fielder, is not playing shallow whatsoever, respecting the power of the middle of the lineup here for North Carolina. But that ball was well hit by Campbell Shane. She would have been scooted in a little bit more. She would have had a chance to catch that one yeah. in the air. Avril Harrell trying to add to the lead. Gets the throw to first in time, but Shane advancing to third. That's what I'm talking about with some good execution that we've seen in bracket play. Avril Harrell got one chance to swing at a strike, and then after she gets that strike on her, Coach Yang turns her around, asks her to put down the sacrifice button. She does beautifully to advance Campbell Shane over to third base. Just one out for Riley Hagas and a runner on third. Vegas, a high fly ball. And Suyama lost it. A run slides in. Shane across making it three to one on that hit. Well, Amanda, you mentioned it. The defense in the outfield for Oregon is playing so deep that even a ball that looks like it's a routine fly out is going to drop in. Bowling Morris. Groshan playing very deep, and that ball just finds a way to drop in front of Suyama. The shortstop going out, Morris and Bowling coming in. Another big run up on the board for North Carolina. Cassidy Seckler is going to be a special pinch runner at first base for Hagis. And in international tiebreaker rules, being able to push across not just that first run, but that second run is really the important run. If you can continue to tack on to your lead, you want to. Ganley Dextrays. This North Carolina Little League out of Rowan. They won it all in 2015. They want to get back with another chance to do it to the championship. It does look like that Evan Morris, the center fielder, is scooted in just a step or two, but step or two can make a big difference. One and two. A change up coming back into play. Look at the way she's going to locate this pitch. It's got over the top spin. It's a little bit up in the zone. And gets a big second out. 
this Oregon team. Two outs for Carmen Freeze. Seckler still on first. This game was tied up in the third by North Carolina after Oregon struck first, and we were that way until right here in the top of the eighth. Steve Yang is asking if he can sub right here and still have Carmen Freeze pitch. It gets a little confusing because everyone has to play, so you've got a lot of substitutions in every Little League game. Now batting for Team Southeast, number 12, Emma Ray Klein. So it will be Emma Ray Klein coming in back into her original spot in the lineup here in the sixth spot. And Marie Klein reached on an error in the second. Reaches for it. Boardwell Gray makes the toss for out number three. That's big for North Carolina. They go up by two runs. We get set here for the bottom of the eighth inning. And, and a good job by Boardwell Gray to limit the damage to just two runs. Made a couple of clutch pitches there with a the strikeout. Sit in there and drive something. Yes, this is our pitcher. Okay, drive. Drive on three. One, two, three. Drive! That was assistant Michelle Gray with the visor talking to the team there. Last chance for Oregon. Well, being the home team. The advantage of that is now they know how many runs they have to put up on the board so they don't have to worry about sacrifice bunting. As a coach, you know you tell your players to go up there and swing away. They need hits, they need another base runner. And again, they will still go with the tie break rule so it will be Bridget Bowling who will be put on second with Sophia Cherry leading off. Has a single tonight, came in hitting 462. Yeah, and they'll have a good base runner at second base to start this inning with Bridget Bowling. Really heads up, has some good wheels, good athlete. Aggressive, very aggressive. So I'm sure they're excited that she gets to start on second base. Last chance for Oregon. I hear the defense for North Carolina. That runner at second base means nothing to you. Your right. job right now is just to get outs. Don't worry about her. Get Take the easy out. Yeah. Bowling is going. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Aggressive. Aggressive. <laughs> Still, it doesn't matter as North Carolina's defense. You're playing your defense the same, whether she's at second base or whether she's at third base. You're still just trying to get outs. Oh, that's the 
luxury of having that second run up on the exactly. board. Exactly. Yeah, if they just had a one run lead, we'd be telling a completely different story. Absolutely. And for Oregon, on the other hand, they need to be choosy. They need to go up there saying, I have to hit and swing at strikes. They need another base runner. So one way or another, they need to find their way on base. Strikeout for Freeze. Her second. Looks like a drop ball in the outside corner and Freeze gets the call. She freezes her for the looking strikeout. Gabby Bauer up next. Bowling is still at third base. Takes a big cut at the first pitch. I mean, if that, that throw gets away from Hagis, where North Carolina could be in some trouble. Good job by Bauer to watch a couple pitches outside the zone until she gets one that's inside the zone. Slightly elevated. She's going to go get it and just knocks it out onto the green above Dextrace, the shortstop's head. Plates a run. It's a one-run game. Second RBI in the tournament for Gabby Bauer. Couldn't have come at a better time. Now they just need one run, the tying run at first with Sierra McKenna up. Two singles for her today. And now it's really time for the defense for North Carolina to step up behind Freeze. She's more of a pitch to contact type pitcher. Got a force at second. And Campbell Shane steps up to help out her new pitcher. Bauer in scoring position with two down. Oregon is out. Down to its final out. It comes down to Evan Morris to keep it going. Got a hit in the second inning for Oregon. She wants to bring Gabby Bauer home right now. Remember how good of a battle that she had in, yeah. in her last at bat back in the sixth inning. The deep fly ball to right field. Yeah, she's a fighter. I love it, her favorite book, The Hunger Game. She's just like Katniss. <laughs> Girl on fire. That's right. And he finds herself in a hitter's count here. In comes the strike from Freeze. Two balls and a strike to Morris. runs full. If Morris can get it on, they've got Kaya Suyama coming up. She's two for three. Morris has got to hang in there. Hits it back to Freeze. It bounces off her foot. But the throw is made in time by Vanderpool. North Carolina, the first team in the championship game. 
Bristol in District 14, Southeast 3. I love you, kid! I love you, kid! Great job! Great job! Way to handle that pressure. Big Carmen across for both teams. What a smile, Big Carmen Freeze, who just felt the pressure there at the end of the game. I mean, we all did. Sweaty palms, just heart racing in this game, trying to make your way to the championship game, and she's still able to finish it off. Lauren Vanderpool getting it done, focusing the ball off of Freeze's foot, makes the throw over to Campbell Shane for the final out of the game. A lot of pressure on that play. North Carolina getting it done. Both teams played so well, showed so much fight, so much heart. What a game to watch. It's one of the best semifinals that I can remember. North Carolina has remembered that feeling of losing in the region championship last year for an entire year. And now they have fought back to earn a spot in the final of the World Series again. Chris Budden is down on the field with the manager, Steve Yang. Steve, you're back in a championship final. What are the emotions right oh, now for you? My emotions are unbelievable right now. Uh, going into about the fifth, sixth inning, uh, my heart was racing and uh, thinking the worst, but Carmen Freeze came in and did a beautiful job of shutting them out in the seventh and eighth inning, and, and we are our girls are super excited right now. You did. You got out of some jams. What are you most proud of today? Uh, I'm proud of our determination and our resilience. We made a couple base burning mistakes that cost us a couple runs, and our girls were down about that but we told them we have to toughen up that we've, we've had some games too easy and this is why we're here for these tough games so thank thank goodness we, we scored one more run than they did thank you Steve we'll see you tomorrow All right, thank you very much a very excited North Carolina team they survive extra innings to make it to the championship game tomorrow a big Final play by Lauren Vanderpool at second base. And North Carolina gets it done. We'll see you tomorrow night in the Little League Softball Championship game. One more.